Hey, hearty, hearty, hearties, and welcome to a Space Engineers video. So today I have a pretty cool showcase for you today, something that I want to show the community and see what you do with it, because there are so many possibilities to this thing, which are buttons and levers, or levers, however you say it. Uh, so, just a quick demonstration of the button here is that I pressed it with my body, like it's a physical button, you have to press it. And the light will turn on, it is a little bit slow. And then it will uh, unpress itself, and the light will turn off, just like a regular button does. So that's pretty neat. Of course you can do more than turn on a light, and I will show you some more examples. Uh, I will also show you why the button is not the best solution, but the lever is way more awesome. So if I flick this lever by moving it with my <laughs> with my uh, space engineers guy, which is I, I just love it, uh, I will turn on this light. Uh, I can flick the lever once again to the other way, and it will turn off the light, which uh, kind of makes sense. You can also see some stuff in the background here. Uh, I can also toggle this to work as the button did. So I flick it, the light will turn on, and it will reset itself. Now it's not doing it at the exact same time like the other system did, but that is because we are using the big lights here, and that is also what I wanted to showcase with this, uh, that you don't have to use the small ship's uh, components and you can't just toggle those, but you can toggle other things. For example, you could use this lever to toggle something really awesome. You can toggle your own safety system. So if we just hang around here, we'll see the torpedo flying away, which is really cool. <laughs> so then I can toggle this off. So hopefully you get the point of what levers and stuff can do. I can toggle lights and toggle gravity pretty much anything that requires power so let's let's take a look at the different things over here i realized in post-production that the video got pretty long so i put in these annotations so you can just watch the part of the video that you are most interested in you could also just go directly to the workshop if you want that as well now they all use the same base principles, but they have different tricks about them to achieve what they are trying to achieve. Uh, so if you're trying to change the light, look at the light lever. If you're trying to change the gravity, look at the gravity thing. And if you're trying to make a button, look at the button thing. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy the video and I will see you in the rest of the video. So let's start with the button so let me just clear out this wall here if i can do that properly yes i can so clear out the wall and you will see kind of what's going on not really it doesn't probably doesn't tell you much uh, but i can tell you that the blue is for the main structure so the everything that is blue is part of the same thing even that little gray block that i missed uh, that is also part of the same structure uh, the yellow are uh, two different moving mechanics, or moving arms and uh, pistons. And you can see that there is one that goes straight through the main structure, like a normal piston. It has a stopper in one direction and a stopper in the other. Then we have a swivel arm with some kind of uh, toothbrush in the end of it, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. It's actually a sun blocker, so we are blocking the sun from this solar panel. Uh, so I can just show you what happens when I press this button. Uh, the swivel arm moves, the solar panel gets sun on it, and stuff happens. So if you've been active on the Steam Workshop or in the Reddit, you've probably seen uh, the solar panels being used this way. And this is something that I would like to call the solar sensor or the solar trigger. Uh, because you are using the sun to trigger events. So what we're doing here is that we have a cockpit. You can see uh, on the right hand side that we have this little warning system or it's like 
a warning thing that we do not have enough energy. We have indeed uh, gotten ourselves a overload. Uh, so what an overload is, is when you're trying to use more power than you have. In this case, we actually have no power whatsoever, but there will be cases where we have power, just not enough. Uh, so what we are trying to do, but f are failing to do because we don't have any power, is the rotor, which you can see uh, that the swivel arm is attached to, that rotor. Uh, it is trying to rotate. It is trying to do a counterclockwise rotation. It also has some specific sets to where it can go. So the upper and lower limits. Also has a little bit of a braking power and a high torque, max torque. It's very important. And a fairly slow velocity. So what it is trying to do is a return to the state it is right now. It's trying to do a counterclockwise turn so it will reach to the position that it is right now. We also have a light attached to this just to show that we are getting power uh, but you could uh, have another solar panel on another ship uh, right here that you do cover when you uncover this. Uh, but the reason this isn't really the perfect thing is because you need to use a solar power uh, to trigger this system or to have the system working. I swear the lever do not need the solar panel at all. Uh, so it's a more complex structure. It is not 100% stable. I've managed to make it much more stable uh, than my previous designs. Uh, so what is happening when we press the button? One final thought here is when we press the button, we get power from the solar cell. This solar cell powers the rotor so it can rotate back. It pushes the piston back out, which is the button. It pushes the button back out and that will cover the solar panel, which turns the system off again. And uh, you could add more lights or whatever you want to this. Any small parts that require power will be toggled. So mass blocks uh, will also be togg toggled uh, by this. So there are many possibilities to this little system here, but let's head over to the levers. So, the lever, the lever, the lever. Now, there is a lot of stuff to say about this, but I'm gonna try to keep it short. But we'll start by remembering that there is not a block right here, and I will explain that uh, very soon, but I will start by explaining the other structures first. So we have a new type of stru structure and I will explain that, but first I want to talk about the base and the uh, moving structure. So the base structure is pre pretty much just a block of heavy armor. Now it probably doesn't need to be, but I found that, the, uh, that it was more stable if it was heavy. So that is something that you can keep in mind if your, um, if your stick starts uh, wobbling then try to make the base more stable by adding weight. The solar panel is only needed if you want it to return to the original position, uh, like I showed you uh, in the second uh, the second time I flicked the, le uh, the lever, it returned to uh, this state. Uh, if you want it to be like a toggle, you can turn it on and leave it on, uh, then you can just uh, remove this solar panel uh, but I'm probably going to add it back on because I want to explain to you why, why the solar panel is there and how it's working. <laughs> uh, so let's leave it there. And uh, since it is now on, it's going to reset itself. So we can keep on by explaining now. Now this is working exactly like the button was when we flick the lever. Once we are allowed to, because the solar panel turned off. Uh, once we flick the lever, we uncover the solar panel. Uh, the solar panel power the rotor. Now the rotor has this preset uh, things. Now it's going to try to close. I'll oh, speed that up. And I was trying to uh, return to this position. And if there is no power, it won't be allowed to. So it will be really easy to flick the lever. And... Uh, once the solar panel is covered or uncovered, it will gain power and the thing will close. 
and now let's remove this uh, now we have the swivel arm it's just covering a small portion of this and I will explain that pretty soon uh, but it's uh, not much to actually talk about it is like the swivel arm on the button and uh, the genius of this structure is that we don't have this part we don't have the button which gives it less uh, movable parts which makes it more stable now we have a little bit of a break on this guy with 25 kilonewtons of uh, break which is good because if I remove that uh, you will see that it will pretty much just bounce uh, wherever it wants and never stop so if we add that uh, I found that 25 is enough for it to not bounce around and still be pretty easy to push now the green structure now the green structure is the power structure it is what turns on and off the light when this solar panel is covered and it is doing that the same way as the blue structure on the button did uh, it is doing that by causing a overload when this solar panel is a little bit covered that means that this structure has to be its own station it cannot be connected to another station that has power or is using the same system because that would uh, connect the powers of those stations and uh, it would cause chaos and stuff not working actually what it would do if I connect this uh, what we had before was this we have the missing block right here behind the lights and if I connect that uh, we will have a light that is continuously on even if I turned this off uh, this is never going to turn off because this structure now has this power uh, generator or the uh, nuclear reactor powering it which is not what we want so we have to make sure that we are disconnected from any other systems so if I turn this off or on uh, I've turned this on and we can go into the cockpit and we will see what is going on what is going on is that we are using 93.6% or something like that it's not super important the exact number what is important is that you cover enough so the closer to 99% you can get and uh, the closer to a overload you can get the less uh, solar panel you have to cover so I'll bring this up we have 99% which is perfect and what I'm using here is the gravity gen as a power sink it is very potent as a power sink now we're using 2.7 uh, kilowatts here uh, but if we need to use more power we could turn up one of the fields a little uh, but having them as 111 means that even if I move up to this block I will not be affected by the gravity because the field is miniature it's just inside the gravity thing so it's just a power sink it would be nice to have a power sink block uh, that itself just you can toggle how much power it should uh, just drain that would be really nice uh, so what happens here when we cover this is if I can make it in time is yes we have 99% power it's going to update and it's going to realize that a little bit of the part of the solar panel has been covered and we have lost about maybe 600 watts uh, but we lost enough so that we have a overload and the overload is of 502 watts so we do not have enough power though if you looked closely you can see that we do have 3.19 kilowatts of power that is being produced but it enough it is not enough to power both the light and the gravity gen so it powers none of them which is kind of strange I would think that it would uh, at least power one of them but it doesn't and that's really good because it allows this to work so that is how this works uh, we're using the overload once again but instead of covering the entire solar panel we are using a power sink to waste most of the power and last but not least is the missile now let's see have I have I got a missile I do have a missile uh, so let's let's place that there 
very nice and we will open the wall here now i won't talk as much as i have right here because you can quickly see it is identical to the last lever uh, we don't have the solar panel here so we don't have the uh, reset but this would have probably been the best place to introduce that now in hindsight anyway i've already said it so yeah so what we have here is just one gravity gen and a bunch of solar panels now in this case the mass uh, or the gravity block is what we want it is not a power sink it is it is actually what we want to turn on because uh, the the missile itself is composed of a few gyros and a mass block so we're trying to uh, turn on the gravity uh, that will go in this direction to make this guy fly away and what we're doing here is that we have a little bit of an overload a very tiny overload of 20 watts and we achieve this overload uh, by first I set up a gravity field that I felt happy with uh, or relatively happy with I had this a bit I think I had it to eight actually I had it, I think I had it to eight G's but that was too much now let's see I want to lower this again now this is too good okay I already sent away the <laughs> maybe too much bum bum too little there we go yes there we go back to normal uh, so I'll place this guy back there we go so now we have that little overload again now the toggles we used here to get the right amount of power is first of all we set how much power do we need and we had we need 46 kilowatts so I placed enough solar panels back here to almost power it or actually first I placed this guy on I uncovered him and then I placed all of these solar panels uh, so that I had enough to just power this just so it was perfectly enough to power this and then I fiddled around inside here made sure that I uh, had a 99% a of the usage or pretty close to that and then I uh, covered this up a little bit so causing the overload uh, but instead of using a power sink, I gave myself more power. Uh, so now by toggling this, I gain that extra bit of uh, 20 watts. It will be enough to power the mass uh, or gravity block and the missile will fly away and we will have a gravity field. And this will be using 98.9 of the power. So I hope I've made sense today and that you like this i hope you will have something of your own to build with this uh, as i said in the beginning there will be a workshop download in the links below or in the description below so go there download the world fiddle around with this yourself and uh, i have some other stuff using this that you might want to see so stick around and i will see you uh, next time